Hello everyone, this is Iran Talk and in this video I'd like to revisit the genetic origins of the North African Berbers as well as other related North African populations. This analysis will be conducted using the latest available genetic studies as well as the latest available genetic tools, particularly the Global 25 that was made by Davidsky of Eurogenes. The samples used here are from North Africa and they denote an ancient North African component that is found in the medieval Guanche populations. So as many of you may know, the Guanche were the indigenous inhabitants of the Canary Islands and their descendants today are primarily restricted to the Canary Islands. Nonetheless, the Guanche can be used to model modern day Berber as well as non-Berber Arab North African populations. In fact, because the Guanche are an isolated ancient North African population, they are excellent proxies for this sort of ancestry in modern day North African populations, particularly the Berbers. As you'll be able to see, modern day Berber North Africans have greater genetic continuity when compared to non-Berber Arab North African populations. What this means is that while the Arabs have been influenced by sub-Saharan African genes, by Arab genes, as well as other ancestral sources, the Berbers have largely remained genetically contiguous to the ancient Guanche. Thus, the Berbers are indeed indigenous to North Africa and have very little foreign ancestry. And what this means is that on a genetic level, the Berbers of today are the direct descendants of the ancient inhabitants of the northern part of Africa, meaning that ancient North African descendants are not found in sub-Saharan Africa, but rather are found in North Africa, which is the true homeland of these people. Overall, this video will serve as a rebuttal to both Afrocentrists as well as Eurocentrics and white nationalists. Now without further ado, I'd like to begin this analysis. Here we have an image of Kabylie North African Berbers and you can see that they have very fair skin and they do not have sub-Saharan African features. Now some Afrocentrists may argue that this is due to them admixing with European populations but as my analysis here will show this is not the case and these people are actually indigenous to North Africa. In contrast, here are Tunisians and you can see a much darker phenotype and this is primarily due to the Tunisian Arabs having more Arab as well as more sub-Saharan African ancestry than the Berbers of North Africa. So while the Berbers are very fair, the Tunisian Arabs are much darker and this is due to admixing with the Arab colonists as well as sub-Saharan African slaves. In fact, the foreign ancestry in the non-Berber Tunisians will be clear once I present the data. Please keep in mind that the Berbers, unlike the Arabs of North Africa, did not receive much ancestry from the Arabs as well as from sub-Saharan African slaves that were imported to North Africa primarily by Arab slave traders. I feel that prior to the Arab slave trade, the majority of North Africans had little to no sub-Saharan African ancestry. Now that's not to say that there was no sub-Saharan African ancestral sources present in the ancient populations as my analysis of the Guanche will show. In fact, in one of his recent videos, Survive the Jive actually said that the ancient North Africans had no sub-Saharan African ancestry, whereas my analysis here will show that this is not the case and that they did indeed have a bit of sub-Saharan African ancestry, though it was very minor. And also keep in mind that the ibero Marisian component, which will be shown here, features some sort of archaic ancestry which was closely related to sub-Saharan Africans though nonetheless still primarily distinct so for him to say that they had no African ancestry is wrong it's just that it was not the majority as Afrocentrists like to claim and it likely exceeded no more than 10 to 15 percent at the most if you consider the ibero marisian ANA source or ancient North African source to also be sub-Saharan African. Though because of the divergence between the ancient North Africans and sub-Saharan African populations, I don't think that the ANA ancestry in ibero Marisians can actually be considered to be sub-Saharan African. My objective here is to refute both Afrocentrists as well as Eurocentrists or white nationalists such as Survive the Jai. Now I'd like to get into the actual genetic analysis. Now to begin, here is a reconstruction of a gaunch man and some may say that he has very robust features which is true to an extent. 
what you can also see is that he has blonde hair and blue eyes. So many may assume for this reason he's likely genetically European. But now I'll break down the ancestry of the Gonches using data from the latest available genetic studies. One was released in 2017 and one was released this past year. The scientists responsible for these studies actually sequenced the entire genomes of the Guanches. I have linked the studies in question in the description. Now to break down the Guanches, here is the source population I will be using. For these calculations, you can see that there is an ibero morigian component, there is an Anatolian farmer component, there is a Yamnayan component, there is a Natufian component, there is a Neolithic Iranian component, there is a Caucasian hunter-gatherer component, there is an early European farmer component, and finally, there is a sub-Saharan African component. Now I will also be taking a look at other populations alongside the Gaunches. Though here are the Gaunches and I will begin with them. So you can see they're on average 34.0% ibero morigian 30.0% early European farmer, 14.0% Anatolian farmer. So this is additional Anatolian ancestry, 9.0% Yamnayan, 6% Natufian, 5.6% Sub-Saharan African, 1.2% Neolithic Iranian and 0.2% Caucasian hunter-gatherer. Thus, with these results, you can see that the ancient Gaunches were mostly of ibero morigian descent as well as Anatolian and early European farmer descent, though they did have a bit of Yamnayan, Natufian, Sub-Saharan, Iran, Neolithic, and Caucasian ancestry as well. Overall, what these results prove is that on a genetic level, the ancient Gaunches or Canarians, as I've labeled them, were neither Sub-Saharan African nor were they European, and they were actually indigenous or autochthonous to North Africa. In contrast, the ancient Punic population was mostly European. So you can see with the Punic results, they were on average 40.4% early European farmer, 26.2% Anatolian farmer, 22.8% Yamnayan, 3.6% ibero morigian 3.6% Natufian, 2.8% Caucasian hunter-gatherer, and 0.6% Neolithic Iranian. What's glaringly evident from these results is that unlike the indigenous Canarians or Guanches, the Punics were mostly of European descent and were distinct from the indigenous population of North Africa. And there's also actually a Punic Berber sample, though I will not feature it in this analysis as the ancestral sources are very archaic to break it down. Nonetheless, this sample that I'm speaking of is very close genetically to the Canarians as well as to modern day North African populations, though nonetheless still a bit more archaic. However, this does not mean that there were not Europeans residing in Tunisia or North Africa as there were and the Punics, despite ascribed by historians to be of Levantine descent, you can see that the ancient Punic population was not a Levantine population but rather were a European population and actually more studies on this will be released which will prove that the Carthaginians as well as the Punics were indeed European. I am specifically referring to Southern Europeans. Now the last population analyzed here is a Nasserid era sample from the late uh, period of Muslim Spain. As many of you may know, the Nasserids ruled over the Emirate of Granada, so this uh, will just be a breakdown of their results. Now here is the breakdown for the late era Nasserid sample, but before I get into it, I'd just like to note that unlike the earlier period which we do have samples for, they had much less sub-Saharan African ancestry and less ancestry from ibero Morigians as well. This went up during the late period, which is interesting. So what this means is that the Islamic slave trade also genetically impacted the Muslims of Al-Andalus, which is quite interesting. Now with these results, you can see that the late era Nasser Muslim sample was on average 45.8% early European farmer, 24.0% Yamnayan, 13.8% ibero Morigian, 7.8% Anatolian farmer, 6.0% Sub-Saharan African, and 2.6% Natufian. Thus, what's evident from these results is that on a genetic level, the population of Muslim Spain, particularly the late Nasserid period, was mostly European, though nonetheless they did have ibero morigian as well as Sub-Saharan and Natufian ancestry. That's essentially it for the historical phase of this analysis, and up next, I'll be taking a look at the genetic origins of modern-day North African populations, beginning with the Berbers of Algeria. Now I've actually presented the breakdowns for these sources just to give you a better idea of what some of them may have genetically resembled. So again you can see that there's an ancient Berber source made up of the Canarian samples that there's a Punic source which is of course made up of the uh, 
puny example that I took a look at. Then there's an Umayyadi Arab source, there's a Morisco source, there's a Sub Saharan African source, and there's a Abkhazian source. Now, here is an image of Algerian Berber, then you can see that they have a very fair complexion and they also have a Mediterranean phenotype. Nonetheless, they're not genetically European and you'll also be able to see that they're very close to the Canarian samples, meaning that this uh, image pretty much refutes both Afrocentrists as well as white nationalists or Eurocentrists. Here are the results for the Algerian Berber, so you can see they're on average 88.8% ancient Berber, which is made up of the Gonj source, 3.5% Punic, 3.1% Umayyad Arab, 2.2% Sub-Saharan Yoruba, and 2.5% Abkhazian Caucasian. Overall, with these results, you can see minimal ancestry from foreign sources and the average continuity among the Algerian Berbers is 88.8%. And again, you can see that their Punic, their Umayyad Arab, their Sub-Saharan and their Abkhazian ancestry is at a minimal. Thus, these results prove that on a genetic level, the modern-day Berbers of Algeria are virtually indistinguishable from ancient North African populations with only minor amounts of additional ancestry. Moving on, here we have an image of Rifian Berbers from Morocco. With these uh, Moroccan Berbers, you can see a very North African phenotype and you can see that both Sub-Saharan African influences as well as European influences seem to be at a minimal and this is what the genetic data shows. Now I'd like to get into the genetic origins of the Moroccan Berbers. But before I do that, I just like to say that these Moroccan Berbers are the direct descendants of both the Almoravids as well as the Almohads and other Atlas Berbers. And for this reason, as you'll see, there's a great degree of genetic continuity and stability amongst the modern day Berbers from Morocco. Here are the results for these Moroccan Berbers. So you can see their ancient Berber ancestry ranges from 87 to 98.2 percent with the average being 93.1 percent. They're only 3.4 percent Punic on average, 0.5 percent Umayyad Arab, 2.2 percent Sub-Saharan Yoruba and 0.9 percent Abkhazian Caucasian. Amongst all North African Berbers, the Moroccan Berbers seem to have the highest genetic stability or continuity. And what's especially apparent is that their foreign ancestry is very, very low. And what this means is that the Punic uh, Carthaginians, the Umayyad Arabs, as well as the Sub-Saharan slavery, and also the Abkhazians uh, during the Ottoman period left a minimal genetic impact on the genome of the Moroccan Berbers. Now, up next, I'd like to take a look at the genetic origins of the Tunisian Berbers. Here is an image of a Tunisian Berber woman and you can see again a very North African phenotype with minimal European and Sub-Saharan African influences. Though a point I must emphasize is that modern day Berbers are genetically more European than they are Sub-Saharan African. And this goes for nearly all Berbers today with the exception of those who are closer to Sub-Saharan African countries and their Sub-Saharan ancestry can be traced to slavery. Now here are the results for the Tunisian Berbers and you can see they're on average 82.7% ancient Berber, 11.5% Umayyad Arab, 2.2% Sub-Saharan African and 3.6% Abkhazian. What's evident from the results for these Berbers is that on a genetic level they're again mostly of ancient Berber or Gaunch descent though they do have elevated Arab ancestry compared to the other Berbers I took a look at. What this means is that the Tunisian Berbers mix more with the Arab invaders. Nonetheless, you can still see that they're mostly ancient Berber and they have minimal Sub-Saharan African ancestry. But much like the Arab component, the Abkhazian component also seems to be elevated here. Nonetheless, despite this, the Berbers of Tunisia are still mostly ancient Gaunch derived. That's essentially it for my analysis on the Berbers and up next I'll be taking a look at the genetic origins of modern day non-Berber North Africans, particularly those who claim to be Arabs. What you'll be able to see is that they have far less gaunch ancestry and have more foreign ancestry compared to the Berbers of today. This can primarily be attributed to the Arabs mixing with them and also the impact of the Islamic slave trade on these populations. And this of course led to them having more Sub-Saharan African ancestry. And here is an image of Algerian Arabs and you can see that they're much darker than the Algerian Berbers and this is likely due to their Sub-Saharan African as well as their Arab ancestry. Now here are the results for 
non-Berber North African population. So you can see their ancient Berber or Gonch ancestry is at 68.8%. Their 1.8% Punic, 16.5% Umayyad Arab. So they have significant Arab ancestry, 7.0% Sub-Saharan African and 6.0% Abkhazian Caucasian. What's evident from these is also that on a genetic level, the general North African population, with the exception of northern Moroccans, are not as contiguous as the Berbers. And this is quite interesting. And this is especially true for the Tunisians and the Libyans who have much lower ancestry deriving from an ancient Berber source. In fact, what's also evident from these results is that they have more Arab as well as more Sub-Saharan and Caucasian ancestry, which is very interesting. So what this means is that both the Arab invasions as well as the Islamic slave trade did somewhat have a significant genetic impact on the genome of modern-day non-Berber North Africans. And this is especially true for the urban areas of North Africa. So what you need to keep in mind is that much of this foreign ancestry was primarily restricted to the urban areas and then dispersed to the rural communities with the exception, of course, of the Berbers. To conclude, this analysis took a look at the genetic origins of modern-day Berbers as well as Arab North African populations and proved that while the Berbers are largely genetically contiguous, the Arabs of North Africa are much more admixed. That's essentially it for this analysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.